Our scripture passage this morning is from the Psalms, chapter 80, verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19, in which we hear a prayer for Israel's restoration. The psalmist sang, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, and let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Here ends our scripture reading for this morning. May it be a blessing to those who hear it and to those who keep it. Amen. Please join with me in a word of prayer. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today marks the official start of the Advent season for our church. A time of preparation as we adhere to the words of Scripture, prepare ye the way. And once again, our color of Advent, blue here, adorns the altar and the sanctuary and myself. And our Christmas tree has been returned to its usual position. And today our children brought forth the symbols of Christmas to commemorate this new season. But we've been here before, haven't we? Every year we put up our trees, purposefully place our lights, hang our decorations and our ornaments, drag out the gift wrapping stations that we've crafted over the years with that one roll of wrapping paper that just never seems to go away or go down, no matter how many years you use it. We turn on our favorite Christmas music in our car, when we're at work. We pull out our Christmas time only attire, which we can only wear during the month of December, and we prepare ourselves for the busyness of the Christmas season. We do this every year, year after year, again and again. And each time we are one year older, yet our traditions remain the same. I and many of our other pastors around the world will once again struggle with finding new and exciting ways to say, Christ is coming, rejoice! Even though just last week we were celebrating Christ as our pre-existing king, Indeed, the season of Advent is a slightly confused one in my mind. Jesus goes from resurrected and ruling to an unborn child in the womb in a week's time. In fact, at this point, we don't even recognize that Mary's pregnant just yet. The angels in our story haven't visited anybody. The orders for the census haven't been sent out to all the peoples, and so Joseph and Mary aren't traveling on a donkey anywhere Instead, Joseph is just some sawhorse jockey, and Mary is just your average teenage girl, and life is carrying on as it always does. Today is no different for us. Life is carrying on as it always does during this time of year, except for the fact that we are once again trying to find ways in which to prepare ourselves for the arrival of an already come persecuted, crucified, risen, and ascended King of Kings. So today, as we begin our preparation for the 2,000th plus time, we turn to today's scripture on restoration, to that theme of, to which I have added renewal. Because the two of these ideas are often used to describe the ways in which God works in our lives according to scripture and spiritual testimony. Restoration and renewal are not exclusively Christian ideals, but they are certainly used often. Jesus offered us a new commandment. Jeremiah promised God's new covenant. 
Paul wrote that the old has passed away and that the new has come. Ezekiel prophesied that on the other side of the river's bank that new growth and healing could be found. Isaiah proclaimed that a new heaven and a new earth were in the works. And finally, the author of Revelation confirmed that God is making all things new. So, as we look at restoration and renewal this morning, I'm curious to know how familiar you are with the origins of the root to all of these words, re. Certainly, you know that there are many words that we use in the English language that use this particular root, and there are many English words which we use that we add that particular root as a prefix to. As an example of some of those words, revile, refrain, recant, rejuvenate, repute, requisite, relegate, refractory, reprehensible, remuneration, and remonstrate. And I practice that a lot at home. Then, of course, there are the prefix uses, reapply, realign, readore, reacquire, and so on. So the origin of the root word of re comes to us from our Latin friends. It means back or again. Now, in the definition of words, I hate when we use the word to help define the word, but in the case of re, it quite literally means to redo something, to turn it, to turn, return to it, and to accomplish that particular verb again and again. One of the sources from which I acquired this information stated that re means again and again. And so I began to think about what again and again would mean with respect to the words restoration and renewal. When we think of these words, or at least when I think of these words, I think of them in the historical context. Every explorer in this world to some degree was and still is seeking to find buried or forgotten treasure in order to restore and renew those particular items. And I have a picture of some buried treasure under the sea behind me. For some, that seeking is for personal profit and gain, and for others, it is simply for the historical accuracy and ability to learn from our past cultures. As one of my history professors in undergrad once stated, a lot can be learned from other people's trash, and how true that statement is. If you were to think about all of the things in your house right now, sitting in your trash can, half-eaten food items, receipts, junk mail, broken ornaments, non-functioning Christmas lights, torn garments, old shoes, whatever else you may have, Should someone happen upon that treasure trove of garbage, one could learn a lot about your life and your culture. Hundreds of years from now, someone could happen upon your particular garbage bag and seek to restore your way of life in 2017. Wouldn't that be fun? They could make attempts at returning or going back to this particular time period. They could renew our traditions. They could repeat them. They could do them time and time again, just as we have. But there are two very important things to remember when we talk about restoration and renewal, especially when we are talking about this in a spiritual context, as we Christians often do. The first is the idea of going back. When we return to older traditions or take an item and attempt to return it to its former gleam and shine, we return back to what it was like when it was first crafted or being made. There really is no way of making that thing 100% the way that it was before. As with all finite things in this world, time has a way of affecting them, even in very small and minute ways. For example, the mountains and plateaus out in the western part of our country were crafted over hundreds and thousands of years of wind and sand erosion. The wind, along with the friction of dust and sand particles, slowly eating away at the solid rock, thus making the beautiful rock formations we see today in places like the Grand Canyon. Waterfalls all over the earth have slowly eroded away mountainsides in the rock, and through that simple Erosion of time and friction in the water through the dust particles that are found within the water. We see the beautiful waterfalls that we have today. Over time, everything is affected. Even those treasured pieces of junk we find in the hidden places of the world. No matter how hard we may try, there's no way to return these items or anything in this world back to 100% the way that it was before. It's just not possible. And so we must keep this in mind when we talk about being restored ourselves 
and to what we are being restored. Take the trees as another example. Every year during the season, this season, the leaves are found all over the ground. The leaves fall from the trees as it sheds this past spring's new growth. The trees do this in order to form new growth next year, for the next following spring. And every year that the tree is restored and renewed, it's not always returned back to 100% the way that it was before, even if we are unable to perceive the minute ways in which that tree has grown over the past year and from year to year. Of course, over time, given photographic recording, one can easily see how trees grow from year to year into the magnificent works of God that we see today. But first, and in order for that restoration and renewal to take place within the tree, the tree must first shed off a layer of life and allow it to die. To leave, no pun intended, the old and dead behind, in order for the new to come. We are much like those trees. In order for restoration and renewal to take place in our lives, we must shed the old in order to allow the new to grow. Sometimes that's a painful process. Sometimes you will see a leaf on a tree that refuses to let go, refuses to stop being green and healthy. But for the, in order for the tree to find new growth, it must let even those healthy leaves go. In our lives, there are many things in which we find healthy growth and many ways in which we find joy. But when the time comes for those things in our lives to pass on or for us to find new ways in which to express those joys, then we must be prepared to do so. And not only once, but again and again just as the root word re suggests. Because here's the second important thing to remember, that as we are restored and as we are renewed, it is something that happens to us not just once, but again and again. Within Christianity and within our communities, we often talk about finding Jesus. We even comment sometimes that when we see someone acting out or erratically, we state, they need to find Jesus. And yes, that is true. However, while it is true about those individuals, it's also true about us. We, too, need to find Jesus. Not just once, but again and again. We need to re-find Jesus, which is why we celebrate and focus on the season of preparation time and time again, year after year. I've said this before, that Jesus was always on the move when he was here on earth. He often only spent two or three days in any given place at any given time. Not simply because he was trying to get his message out to as many people as he possibly could in the short amount of time that he had here among us, but because this is how the Spirit of God moves. God is not as immobile as the rock but rather flows like the wind or water. Moving from place to place, all the time God is found in new ways in our lives and in different places. In order to keep up with God, we must understand that finding Jesus, inviting Jesus into our lives, is not just a once and done type of life event, but one that must be done repeatedly again and again. That year after year, we celebrate the arrival of Christ with anticipation and preparation. That every year, we hear his teachings in a new light and with a renewed sense of learning. Again and again, we must hear the good news and respond accordingly with our offering, with our praise, and with our attendance to the ministry to which God calls each and every one of us. And yes, each year, again and again and again, we must relive the sacrifice which God made through Jesus upon the cross in order that we might be renewed and restored. So know that in the season of preparation that you are preparing in many of the same ways in which you did last year, but that you are preparing for something different. A return not to who you were a year ago at this time, but to who you will become in the time you have ahead. Again and again, you will hopefully find yourself in this place, preparing for what is to come, preparing the way for the same Jesus Christ whom you celebrated before, from whom you have received knowledge and blessing and grace, 
and for whom you have mourned and rejoiced at his return. Again and again we sing praises to God for the restoration and renewal of our spirit. And may God's praises be sung and repeated this season and all year through. Thanks be to God. Amen.